Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, this year has been a great year for uh, open source and uh, a very good year for the Linux Foundation. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm uh, here to give you an update on how the Linux Foundation is doing. Uh, an update on how the Linux Foundation is doing. Uh, and I'm going to be followed by Chris Anacek uh, from the Linux Foundation, uh, who works uh, across many of our projects, but mainly on the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, to show you how you can uh, participate, bring projects to the Foundation, and uh, what value we provide as an organization. So uh, with that, I thought I would start uh, by, uh, in December, looking back on 2019, on all the amazing things that our organization has accomplished. Uh, today, the Linux Foundation is home to over 250 uh, open source projects. But they're not just any open source projects. Uh, they're some of the most important shared technology in the world. Whether it's the Linux kernel project, which is the most successful widely deployed software uh, in the history of computing, uh, or newer projects like Kubernetes, which has redefined how cloud applications are created, deployed, and managed. Uh, or things that you'll hear about today in the blockchain space with Hyperledger that's used in financial services and supply chain management. Zephyr, uh, which is increasingly becoming uh, an important and major real-time operating system powering many, many systems worldwide. But a, a few statistics that I think uh, are interesting. Uh, this year, we're adding a new major project every single week. Whether it's a, a very major umbrella project like the Continuous Development Foundation that you'll hear about today, uh, or uh, uh, just a small project uh, that's sort of standalone like GraphQL. Uh, every single week, we're introducing a new open source project, projects that uh, are participated in by over 1,600 major corporations and tens of thousands of developers worldwide. Uh, we uh, have had a lot of growth in events like this this year. Uh, we have now uh, gathered over 40,000 developers at our over, I think, 157 events worldwide. Uh, how many people were at the KubeCon event, I think three, four weeks ago? So a few of you. Uh, KubeCon in San Diego just about a month ago had over 12,000 attendees at that event. Uh, it was the biggest Linux Foundation event uh, we've ever had. We're on track to go over 50,000 developers next year globally participating in our events. Today, in our training program, 500 people register for Linux Foundation training, whether it's for Kubernetes, or Linux, or Node.js, or Hyperledger. 500 people register every single day for our training programs. Uh, we have, we're training millions of developers globally on the latest open source technology from massive open online courses all the way to skills-based testing for Kubernetes, Linux, and many other cutting-edge technology. We introduced new software tools this year to help our communities grow. We introduced a mentoring platform that can enable mentors to pair with mentees to teach new developers about how to participate in projects like Linux, like Kubernetes, like Node.js. We introduced software security tooling this year for our projects that do code analysis across projects to show vulnerabilities, map dependencies, and alert us for upstream security issues before they become downstream security issues in any of your products or services. We also gave away quite a bit of funding to bring people from underrepresented communities into our development world. Women, people from underrepresented communities, people in poverty. We've given away over $1.4 million 
uh, offered hundreds of scholarships to have people come and attend our events so that we can create a better, more diverse community across all Linux Foundation projects. Um, and we've added over 200, I think this is an old number, uh, almost 300 new members this year. The Linux Foundation now has over 1,600 uh, corporate members who participate in the hundreds of projects that we host. And I should point out that it hasn't just been a good year for the Linux Foundation, it's been a good year for the Eclipse Foundation. It's been a good year for the Apache Software Foundation and many other open source organizations because open source is now such a critical and common part of any modern software development. Our organization has also been recognized by the industry year after year after year as one of the most important organizations that affect how people build software. The SD Times in Silicon Valley has recognized us for being alongside Amazon, Microsoft, and others as an influencer. Three years in a row, we've won their Influencer Award, which represents the platforms that people use and the technology that people adopt now and in the future and it's really all it shows that how important open source and our organization is to the technology sector. So we started a long time ago with Linux, but I would like to show you where we're going as an organization now and into the future. With Linux, we obviously started focusing on one platform, mainly on the Linux kernel project, and mainly working many years ago to make Linux a ubiquitous global computing standard. And we have a lot of success bringing developers into the Linux ecosystem, creating a legal framework so that people understood open source software and how reliable it can be, providing that legal defense to make sure that people know that open source software is safe and reliable. Um, and we succeeded beyond our wildest dreams. But in that process, we developed some best practices that you're going to hear from Chris about how to take everything we learned promoting and protecting Linux and apply it to other projects. We started with other projects closely related to Linux. In the telecommunications sector, not too long ago, some of you may remember, uh, Sun and Spark was a de facto platform for many telecommunications systems. We worked on a project called Carrier Grade Linux to take Linux and make it telco ready, to harden it, to make it so that it could support the kind of workloads in a telco environment. And that has been unbelievably successful and was at the time essentially entirely displacing Sun Microsystems in the telecommunications sector. Our Yachto project is a good example of where there was a need for a modern embedded system, a custom build environment for Linux. We were able to work with all of our member companies and thousands of developers, and now the Yachto project really is the de facto standard for building uh, custom Linux distributions, in particular for embedded systems. We then expanded beyond Linux-related projects to the networking sector. In 2010, I want to say, I can't remember the exact date, uh, we started working on the Open Daylight project. This was an open source project for software-defined networking. At a time when the networking industry was moving from a hardware-based industry to a software-defined industry. So the same concept of server virtualization was being applied to what we now know as software-defined networking today, or networking virtualization. Uh, Open Daylight quickly became a standard software-defined networking framework, and based on that, work, we expanded into many, many new areas of collaborative development, 
across a wa even wider variety of uh, industries. And there are too many to count, so I'm only going to point out a few. But we have now been taking the concept of open source development into entirely new industries. One example is the Academy Software Foundation. How many people here know the Oscars, the Oscar Movie Award? Pretty much everyone, everyone knows it. So the Academy of Motion Pictures partnered with the Linux Foundation to help Disney, Lucasfilms, Industrial Light and Magic, DreamWorks, open source the software that's used to create all the movies that all of us see every day. <coughs> Star Wars, The Avengers, all <coughs> those movies use open source software to create those films, and that open source software is a part of the Academy Software Foundation, which is uh, at the Linux Foundation itself. We spent two years working with that industry to teach them how to work collaboratively in open source and now the vast majority of that work is out in the open and being collaborated on by all the major film studios worldwide. In networking, our OPNFV project is the de facto network test standard for network function virtualization. Our Linux Foundation networking project represents a collaboration between roughly 80% of the world's telecommunications operators. Think about that. The networks that power three billion mobile users are running on open source software, being managed and provisioned using open source software that's being created at the Linux Foundation. Our automotive grade Linux project grew mainly out of here in Japan in an early partnership with Toyota Motor Company and many other Japanese automobile makers and supply chains, companies like Renaissance, Panasonic, who participated in creating an open source reference implementation for the in-vehicle experience, the informatics, displays, and so forth. That project is now in millions of production vehicles worldwide. You're going to hear about the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, but I think, how many people here know Kubernetes? Cloud Native? So our organization really promoted that term, Cloud Native Computing, to redefine for the whole world how people build modern applications. And we're doing that today in partnership with over 500 companies worldwide. This is something a lot of people don't know, but the Linux Foundation is also home to the world's largest certificate authority. Our Let's Encrypt project is securing the majority of web traffic by giving away for free TLS certificates that help improve the security and privacy of everyone. The idea is that creating a secure web experience would just be as simple as app get let's encrypt. And it's really working in dramatically increasing the amount of secure and private traffic that runs over the global internet. And we have many, many more. But we didn't just stop at software. This year we've seen a dramatic increase in specification development, in standards development at the Linux Foundation with projects like GraphQL, with projects like the Open Container Initiative, which is both a reference implementation and a specification. And we have a new uh, organization that we launched earlier this year called the Joint Development Foundation, which just three weeks ago received PaaS submitter status from the International Standards Organization, ISO. What that means is that the Linux Foundation can take from a GitHub repo all the way through to an accredited international standard recognized by the International Standards Organization, ISO, thanks to our Joint Development Foundation. We've been able to bring the world of standard setting and open source together for the first time. Finally, this year we've seen an increase in hardware-related initiatives at the Foundation. This year we announced 
the Open Power Foundation moving to the Linux Foundation, the Risk Five Foundation moving to the Linux Foundation. We formed the Chips Alliance with many of the largest cloud computing vendors in the world. These hardware related activities are now taking the concepts of open source and applying them to silicon instruction set technology and other hardware related activities. And finally, we're not just stopping at standards and open hardware, we're also doing open data sharing initiatives. Our uh, open source data licensing initiatives are making it easier for people to share large data sets to improve outcomes from machine learning models. We are building open data practices to teach people how to use data effectively and share it easily. We're even creating some ethical AI initiatives that help teach people how to train models in a way that includes uh, implications around the ethics of the model that, they're uh, that they are actually training. And so we have an, a major new set of open data sharing practices and open data legal programs that will really bring in, hopefully, a new frontier of widely shared collective data. So what do we have in store for 2020? In 2020, here are some projects that you should keep your eye on. One, the Linux Foundation Energy Initiative. This is an initiative to create an open source platform to, uh, to manage the modern utility grids. In particular, we're seeing uh, utility operators in Europe, in France and other parts of Europe, open sourcing the software that they're using to create smart grid technology that powers their entire countries. We have new security initiatives coming in 2020. We've done a comprehensive analysis of the global software supply chain, starting with open source projects, moving to package management systems, all the way to downstream consumption of open source, to understand how to, at every level, improve the security practices of the vast global software supply chain. We're doing that research in partnership with Harvard University's Lab for Innovation Science, and we'll be publishing that research next year. We also are seeing significant growth in our deep learning initiatives. Uh, today you're gonna hear about uh, a project that recently came to the Linux Foundation, Onyx. I think that's one that's very interesting. We have some more uh, uh, projects coming in in this area. Uh, our drone code project is starting to really uh, pick up speed. Uh, this project has more flight hours than any other unmanned aerial vehicle <coughs> program in the world. Uh, finally, and, the, and my last point is, if you haven't gone and looked at the Linux Foundation's to-do group, this is a group of open source program management professionals from companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, companies here in Japan, that teach each other how they manage open source, the legal framework, choosing open source projects, creating open source as a part of their engineering process. It literally is a how-to guide of how to use open source to create commercial products and services. So we're seeing a ton of growth in that particular project and many, many more. And with that, uh, I'd like to leave you by saying, if you're going to the Computer Electronics Show, uh, the second week of January, we are going to have a huge booth there for our automotive grade Linux initiative. Uh, we'll have several demo vehicles and, so, and many, many demos of the platform. And so uh, if any of you are attending that event, we look forward to seeing you there. So it's been a great year for the foundation. Uh, and I'd like to invite Chris Anacek up to talk to all of you about how we create value in detail and how you can participate in bringing new projects to our organization and participating in the projects we have. So with that, if you don't mind, Nori, I'd like to bring Chris Anacek up on stage to talk about how you can participate in the foundation 
and I want to thank you all for coming today. Thank you very much.